everyone, it's me, Andrew Foreman, and I am here today in the I Am Third Rick Deer Memorial Chapel to share a special message that I've been inspired to share with you. And I figured no better place than in a place that is defined around the idea of being third and putting others before yourself. A message that Rick Deer passed on to all of us, and I figured it's a great spot to share this message knowing that he's always watching over us. A couple weeks ago, I came home from work and there was a package sitting outside of my house from Amazon. Now, I do order a lot of things from Amazon. However, when I do order things, I don't order them to my house. So I'm a bit skeptical. So I pick the package up, do a little pat down, a little smell test, make sure it's safe. And then I open it up and inside is a gift. And if you're familiar with Amazon, when you send gifts, you can write a little gift message. And there's a message in there from my phantom friend. For those of you who don't know, during week five of our summer family camp season, we run a special program for our staff called Phantom Friends. Each staff member is assigned randomly another staff member, and for that week, it's their responsibility to go out of their way to show that person kindness. And it's really impressive some of the things that they come up with to pamper and to make that person feel really special, right? So here I am, I get a package in the mail from a Phantom friend. Pretty cool. And it doesn't end there. A couple days later, I come home, another package from Amazon, another gift from my phantom friend. A couple days later, I come home, another package, another gift from my phantom friend. One of them, I don't know if my phantom friend realizes this, probably not, super appropriate. I'm gonna share it with you right now. It is a fresh pair of undies. Yes, nice clean undies. Have not worn them yet, so they are clean. And I hope you can see it is a, a, a very camp appropriate pair of undies that says, beware of natural gas. Now, why is, why is this super appropriate? Well, my diet has strictly been scrambled eggs, baby carrots, apples, <laughs> oranges, and cottage cheese, because those are all things that would have spoiled in the fridge, in the dining hall, since we haven't had campers. So I'm taking one for the team, eating all the leftovers so that they don't go bad because we don't like wasting food. However, natural gas is plentiful. <laughs> and so I get these gifts my phantom friend, right? Pretty cool, heartwarming, really kind uh, to, for someone to go out of their way to send me these gifts. And then it doesn't stop there. Then I receive a lovely, delicious package of chocolate covered pretzels, which I'm saving for a very special occasion. I'm not sure what that's gonna be, but when it happens, they're gonna be delicious. Whoopsies. <laughs> it doesn't stop there. Then I was gnomed, right? Yes, gnomed, right? I received a gift bag full of special treats from the gnomes, which included some very impressive artwork, as you can see. Oh, a little blurry, sorry. On this canvas here. And, and at this point, I understand that I have an obligation. That an obligation to myself, and an obligation to use the platform that I have here at camp to share the inspiration that I feel based on the gifts that I've been given. And I think it's an important message. And I hope you stick with me here. As I was thinking about what this message was, I kept going back to the idea of random acts of kindness. But I didn't like the word random. Because yes, to me, these gifts might have been random. But to the people out there who were sending the gifts, there was nothing random about it. It was thought through, planned for, prepared. They spent money on it, right? It wasn't a random act of kindness. It was deliberate, purposeful, specific. And so the, the, the one I'm sticking with is intentional. Intentional acts of kindness. And I think that's a place that we can all strive to do better in because I truly believe that a lot of you out there, because I know you, are good people with big hearts. And so I specifically use the word continue or to improve upon because I know that you are good people doing kind things. But I think now more than ever, there's an opportunity for all of us to step up our intentional acts of kindness, to go above and beyond, just like Buzz Lightyear, Oh no, <laughs> that was to infinity and beyond. I think now is no better time to go to infinity and beyond with our intentional acts of kindness, right? And I've been inspired to take on this challenge and I'm hoping I can inspire you. Hopefully, 
you've seen in the news and on social media recently, all these uh, videos and messages and articles highlighting the good things that are happening in the world. And I know a lot of them seem really big, over the top, maybe it's you know sports figures and celebrities donating thousands or millions of dollars or buying pizzas for entire hospital staffs, right? Things that cost a lot of money, which is amazing. Absolutely and truly amazing. But what I don't wanna do is lose sight of the fact that all acts of kindness are important. Every intentional act of kindness can have a huge impact, whether it's something you do on your own or something that you do by gathering 500 people outside of a hospital. And so as I was looking through all these different things that were happening in the world, all these intentional acts of kindness, I saw something I wanted to share that might be a little more down to earth. So one of the cool things I saw was there was a neighborhood, or I guess it was a street, where every house went outside with sidewalk chalk and drew pictures and wrote uh, words of appreciation for anyone who is delivering packages or mail. A little bit of time, a little bit of energy, a little bit of sidewalk chalk, Huge impact. There was a gentleman who was mowing his lawn, right? And for the past 30 years, he mowed his lawn, put the lawnmower away, went inside, checked it off the list. This time, he decided to just keep going. Instead of stopping on his property line, he mowed his neighbor's yard and their neighbor's yard, right? A little bit of time, energy, gasoline, a little wear and tear in the lawnmower, huge impact. There was a uh, US Postal Service worker who every day would wear a new costume. Right? So all these kids and families who are stuck at home, getting the mail is exciting. You know what's more exciting? When Iron Man shows up to deliver your mail. A Little bit of time, a little bit of money, a little bit of effort with the costumes, huge impact. There was a, a family who had an elderly couple living next door who couldn't leave because they are very susceptible to the virus. Uh, the kids came up with this themselves, right? So first off, the most impressive thing I've ever heard of. The kids come up with this idea themselves. What they do is they drew pictures, right? And then they took them to their neighbor and their neighbor has a covered porch with a big picture window. And they would tape their pictures to the window so that every day, this couple had new artwork to look at. And each day they would change it and they would slide the old drawings under the door and then they would post new ones. A little bit of time, a little bit of crayon, a little bit of marker, a little bit of creativity, huge impact, right? There's opportunities for all of us to have an impact. We all know ourselves and our situation better than anyone. It's just finding what opportunities we have based on our skill sets, our capabilities, our location, where we are, what we have access to, our financial means, and figuring out how we can make a difference how we can take on intentional acts of kindness. Because again, whether you're three years old, 33 years old, or 333 years old, there's opportunities for all of us to take on this challenge. And so here's what the challenge is. I challenge you to take on two intentional acts of kindness every week. And if you've already been doing intentional acts of kindness, I challenge you to take on two additional acts of kindness. At a minimum, if you go above and beyond that, you get a virtual fist bump because you're awesome. But I challenge myself and all of us and everyone sitting around you, your friends, your neighbors, your family, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, your dad, your mom, your kids, to take on two intentional acts of kindness. And it can be something that you do within your own house, for your neighbors, for your community, for your church, for your work, or whoever. You decide what opportunities are out there because there's opportunities for everyone. Maybe it's as simple as going through your phone book and find someone you haven't talked to in, in, in quite a while. Maybe someone from college or high school or someone that you worked with over a summer when you were a kid at a camp maybe. But the point being is a simple phone call can make a huge difference, especially to someone who's maybe living alone. That's super cool. Call up an old friend, say hello. But what I'm hoping is that right down here in the comments, we can use this as a resource, as a hub to share our ideas. Maybe it's things that you've done. Maybe it's things that have been done for you. You know, acts of kindness that you've received. Maybe it's things you heard about, ideas you've seen on the internet, the global web. That's super cool. Let's share the ideas down here so that we can learn from each other. Because the more ideas we can share, the more opportunities we may have to take on additional acts of kindness. And I'll leave you with this thought. So again, Mr. Rogers, as many of you know from the television show, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had a message that is very appropriate for um, 
the idea of intentional acts of kindness, and the experiences that we're going through now. When he was growing up as a kid and he would see scary things on the news, his mother would always remind him to look for the helpers. That in dark times, there will always be helpers. And even as an adult, he would always remind himself during scary times, during times of disaster, to always look for the helpers. Because there will always be so many good people doing good things, helping, during scary and difficult times. I think that is unbelievably appropriate for what we're seeing now and opportunities that we have to be those helpers with our intentional acts of kindness. So again, I challenge you, two acts of kindness a week. I hope I've inspired you just like I feel inspired. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for joining me in this challenge. And again, please share your ideas down here in the comments. Let's learn from each other. Let's do this together. And let's continue this movement of intentional acts of kindness. Thanks for joining me.